the Ravens have quite a big issue on their hands. Big trust. Whoa, whoa. Lamar Jackson. Lamar has had his moments and even won an MVP since the Ravens drafted him back in 2018, but now his rookie deal is about to expire and Baltimore is going to have to pay him big. But so far, the two haven't gotten anywhere, and for good reason. Lamar is coming off of the worst year of his career, and there are still plenty of questions that need to be answered. Remember, the Ravens traded up to the last pick in the first round of the 2018 NFL Draft to take Lamar Jackson. He backed up Joe Flacco to start his rookie year, but after Flacco got hurt, Lamar took over in November. Starting in only seven games, Lamar went 6-1, passed for 1,201 yards and six touchdowns to three interceptions and had 695 yards and five touchdowns rushing. I guess you could say that he was okay in 2019. Interceptions. In 2020, Jackson rushed for over 1,000 yards and seven touchdowns again while passing for 2,757 yards and 26 touchdowns to nine interceptions. He went 11-4 behind center and most importantly won his first playoff game, beating the Titans in the wildcard round. Lamar did miss some time in 2020 due to an ankle injury, but still ended up making the Pro Bowl. He went 7-5, passed for 2,882 yards and 16 touchdowns to 13 interceptions, and rushed for 767 yards and 2 touchdowns. Admittedly, Lamar wasn't really that good last year. He did get sick, and like I said, he dealt with an ankle injury, but it was really at times. There's a lot of pressure for Lamar to bounce back this season. The arm is something that continues to be brought up when it comes to his weaknesses and something that I believe is overblown. But last year, it definitely wasn't. Lamar was rated out as the 28th best deep passer in the NFL in 2021. 27 was Trevor Lawrence. 29 was Zach Wilson. Not exactly two players you'd want to be in between. Lamar only completed a third of his 20 plus yard throws and was dead last in accuracy. The other quarterback with a big contract question surrounding them this offseason was Kyler Murray, who did just get a five year, $230.5 million deal with $160 million of that guaranteed. His $46.1 million average annual value is second in the NFL behind only Aaron Rodgers. The big Kyler contract is definitely a good sign for Lamar. And honestly, there's no debate that Lamar has been the superior quarterback during their time in the league. The two of them are less than a year apart in age, and Lamar has been better than Kyler in the regular season, in the postseason, and in just about every way. So there's no doubt he warrants more money. There was a lot of expectations that Lamar may hold out of training camp this offseason, but to a lot of people's surprise, he he did in fact show up ready to go. He and the Ravens are continuing to work towards a new deal, but it doesn't sound like they've gotten too far. Lamar is coming up on the final year of his rookie deal, and it would certainly be a news story all year long if he is playing on an expiring contract. At the same time, the longer the Ravens wait to sign Lamar, the more the quarterback market is going to shift, which theoretically should benefit Lamar more than anything. I'd bet that the potential contract that Lamar asks for is like 46.2 million or 46.5, right above the Kyler Murray deal. Plus, he'll probably only want a four year or so contract so he can still get another huge payday when he's like 29. Because remember, Lamar Jackson is only 25. The Ravens offense is definitely going to look a lot different this season, mainly after Baltimore traded away Hollywood Brown. The Ravens took Hollywood back at the 2019 NFL Draft in the first round, and he really didn't turn into as good of a wideout as some of the other guys in the class. It was a stacked year looking back. Guys like AJ Brown, Terry McLaurin, Debo Samuel, and DK Metcalf. Hollywood hasn't been bad by any measure, but it's hard to think that the Ravens passed on all of those guys first. He did just have his first year over 1,000 yards, and while his value was hot, the Cardinals offered a first round pick for him. Baltimore took it, which I think is a fantastic trade for the Ravens, but it does leave a hole in the offense that has to be filled, and it's going to be up to Rashad Bateman. 
Baltimore used its first round pick, 27th overall at the 2021 NFL Draft on Bateman. He started the season on injured reserve after he had groin surgery, but Bateman was activated in October. He played in 12 games and had 515 yards and a single touchdown. Of course, there is the big chance that Bateman isn't even going to be Lamar's top target this upcoming season. It may likely continue to be one of the best tight ends in the league, Mark Andrews. At the 2018 NFL Draft, the Ravens selected Mark Andrews. He had a solid rookie year despite starting the season as the fourth string tight end, 552 yards and three touchdowns. Andrews sort of broke out in 2019. He led all tight ends with 10 touchdowns, had 852 yards, and made the Pro Bowl. Andrews recorded 701 yards and seven touchdowns in 2020. He was a first team all pro and made the Pro Bowl again in 2021 after he got a four-year, $56 million extension in the offseason. He went on to lead all tight ends with 107 receptions, 1,361 yards, and nine touchdowns. The last time we saw Lamar Jackson truly playing at an elite level was in 2019, and it's probably not a coincidence that that's really the last time we saw Ronnie Stanley. Stanley has barely played over the last two years because of injuries, and if he is healthy in 2022, it'll be a good sign of how good Lamar Jackson can be. The Ravens put a big investment into Stanley, drafting him sixth overall back in 2016, and he ended up starting at left tackle as a rookie, but did miss four games with a foot injury. Stanley only gave up three sacks in both 2016 and 2017. He was named a first team all pro and made the Pro Bowl in 2019. He signed a huge five year, $112.8 million extension ahead of 2020, but then Stanley suffered a season ending injury in week eight. And then the following year, he only played in a single game and had to undergo ankle surgery. He'll be a huge boost to the line in 2022 if he can actually remain healthy, but there's a new name on the line to watch at center, Tyler Linderbaum, who the Ravens just used a first round pick on. Tyler Linderbaum spent his first season at Iowa as a defensive lineman, but ended up moving to center before 2019. He started every game at center and did again in 2020 when he was named an All-American. In 2021, Linderbaum was a unanimous All-American and won the Remington Trophy, given to the best center in college football. There are definitely reasons to be optimistic about the Ravens' offensive line, but how is it going to be used? Running backs don't necessarily seem to matter as much in Baltimore as they used to, just because Lamar Jackson is probably going to be your primary rusher. Now, it's obviously still nice to have good backs, and luckily for the Ravens, they'll get J.K. Dobbins back this season. Baltimore drafted him in the second round of the 2020 NFL Draft, and he had over 800 yards and nine touchdowns as a rookie. But last preseason, he suffered a torn ACL. It's been a while since we've seen him on the field, but if he's still the same guy that he was two years ago, he'll be the Ravens' go-to on the ground. It's going to be an interesting year for the Ravens nonetheless. If Lamar Jackson is playing on an expiring contract, it's going to be a story all year long, and he's going to get criticized every step of the way the same way we saw with Dak Prescott, and I'm sure a lot of it will be warranted. The Ravens didn't make the playoffs for the first time since Lamar got there in 2022, and to make matters worse, they were the worst team in the AFC North. They have a lot to prove, and the division is going to be very odd. I don't think there's another division in football with more questions than the AFC North. The Bengals just went from one of the worst teams in the league for years to making a Super Bowl, and now people are wondering if they're the real deal. The Steelers have a good roster, but there are also so many questions at quarterback with Mitch Trubisky and when we're going to see Kenny Pickett hit the field after they took him in the first round. Finally, we have the Browns. Oh lord, the Browns. Who knows, Baker Mayfield is gone and Cleveland did trade for Deshaun Watson, but when is he actually going to play? It's going to be a drama filled year in the AFC North. But if Lamar Jackson's contract doesn't get done by the time the Ravens hit the field in week one, you can bet that'll be one of the biggest storylines in 2022. 